And joining me now uh, is Dr. Tom Inglesby. He's the director of the Center for Health Security of the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Dr. Inglesby, welcome back to Meet the Press. And I want to put up on screen uh, a, a breakdown of, of the curves, uh, a regional breakdown, because I'm curious to see how this impacts sort of how we should view where this virus is right now. There's clearly not only a flattening, but a bending of the curve downward in the Northeast. But in the South and the West, it's a plateau. And in the Midwest, it's just starting, we hope, to plateau because the curve was actually continued on an upward trajectory for most of the week. Looking at it that way, what does that tell you where we are when it comes to this virus? Well, I think overall the good news for the country is that the overall top line numbers are trending down on average over the country. But you really have to look at the state level and the regional level to understand where your own state or your own county lies in the whole story. Uh, as you said earlier, there are some states that are still having increasing daily numbers of cases, some states that are flat, some states that are going down. So you really need to know the story. You need to ask questions in your own state about how things are going. And some of the questions that are most important are, are hospitalizations still going up? Are our ventilator, ventilators still uh, in short supply, or do we have many of them in case right. there's a new flare? Those kinds of questions are really important for people in states to be asking about their own situation. And I know when we were talking earlier this weekend, you wanted to put an emphasis of concern on how this is spreading in rural America. I'm going to put up a map up here. Mm -hmm. And in this map, I want to, the, the counties that are in yellow are counties that just in the last week have seen a, a spike mm -hmm. in cases. And just about all of these counties are populations less than 50,000. What is the status of, uh, how concerned are you about the ICU bed situation in these rural counties? Because the numbers may not look that bad when you look at them from 30,000 feet, but in an individual county of less than 50,000, 20 cases, 20 hospitalizations could become a huge deal. Yeah, I think the local details are going to matter a lot. And, and as you can see in the map, the, the spread has been from big cities, uh, especially in the Northeast, and then moving towards counties that are further away from cities, either ones of small towns or rural counties. And even if numbers are small in those places, they have to be very vigilant because they may not have a hospital that's in close reach or ventilators in, in nearby um, areas, and they may have to go quite a distance to get the care they might need if they get sick from COVID. So those are important places to watch and, and for states to be vigilant about. Um, what do you tell, we've gotten quite a few emails from viewers who say, and I've had plenty of conversations with folks who say, hey, you know what, our area is just fine, and I don't understand why mm -hmm. all these lockdowns, and boy, they did all these lockdowns in that state, and our state's the same way without all the lockdowns. Were they really all necessary? What do you say to that viewer who they look in their own neighborhood, essentially, and think, I, I just don't see it? Yeah, well, I think lockdowns were necessary. They actually have changed the course of the epidemic in the United States. We have the largest epidemic in the world, five times as many cases as any other country in the world. And you can see over time that the, the curve is moving in the right direction and it is now appropriate for states to be thinking about how to very carefully reopen and do it as safely as possible. But yes, I think we needed to get control of this epidemic in the country and now reset. And now places where there is very little disease, those are the places where right. it's gonna be safest to gradually reopen. Give us a sense of what you think the next three months are going to look like with this virus. We keep talking about what the fall mm -hmm. might look like. But given what we've seen around, what you've studied around the world and in various climates, what are you, and seeing what our reopening status is essentially going to be, right, where it looks like about a half the country is going to stick with some social distancing guidelines, what do you expect the summer to look like? Well, it's difficult to predict. I mean, the future really is in our hands. It depends on how people in individual states react to the situation. If people continue to be very careful about physical distancing, wearing cloth masks when outside, uh, avoiding gatherings, I think it, I'm hopeful that states will be able to, to control their outbreaks. We also need to have very strong contact tracing efforts around the country. That's, that's what countries around the world have used with a lot of success. So if you get a case, 
you investigate it quickly, you make sure all those contacts are safely quarantined, and we keep control that way. I think we shouldn't think of this as kind of starting and stopping and this is over. This is a longer term right. process and we're all in it together and our, our actions are gonna matter. I think you know the, the, the models in this country, the, the leading models predict that there may be as many as 110,000 people who have died by this disease a month from now. Uh, those are models. Uh, it's possible for us to do better than models. It's also possible for us to do worse depending on what people decide mm -hmm. to do, their own actions. What do you say, what do you um, take away from a situation in Georgia where they were the, one of the first states to try to reopen, there was a lot of doom and gloom predictions, and so far, things have gone okay? Yeah, Georgia has been about the same as it was before the lockdown ended. Mm -hmm. I, my understanding is that many people in Georgia are cautiously and carefully moving uh, back towards reopening, so, so I don't think people should say, see the reopening process in Georgia as everything happened at once and everything restarted in the same way. It seems like there's a lot of caution by individuals uh, around the state. But that being said, it does, it, it, it's a good beginning in the fact that it hasn't gotten worse. We, it does take time for us to see the change that might occur following changes in policy because it takes a while for people to, be, to become sick after getting infected and it could take even longer for them to be hospitalized. So I think it's too soon for us to say in any state how things are going. We need to see a couple of more weeks, but right. it's good news that things have not gotten the wrong direction. And very quickly, very quickly on a vaccine, we hear this 12 to 18 month timeline. Is that timeline too optimistic. We know the president wants it sooner and, and you know, why wouldn't he, why wouldn't anybody want it sooner? Mm -hmm. Is the 12 to 18 month timeline realistic or not? Well, uh, coming into this year, I would have said it was completely unrealistic. And I still think that there, it is, it is uh, far from a sure thing. But given that there's, that there are now 110 vaccine projects going on around the world, that all the major vaccine companies in the world are, are working on this in some way, and given that right. Tony Fauci and Monsef Slaoui are now leading figures in the U.S. in this project, and they both believe it's possible, I think it is possible, but everything would have to break in the right way, and there are many ways that it might not work. So I don't think we should bank on it, but we should hold out some level of hope that if everything goes in the right direction, we could possibly be see, see vaccine by the end of the year. Well, that's for sure. The hope being that, hey, we've got the smartest minds in the world all focused on one problem. Gosh darn it, let's see if we can get that solution very quickly. Ta Dr. Inglesby uh, of Johns Hopkins, thanks for coming on and getting us started this morning. Thanks so much, Chuck. Hello from Washington, I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.